Lord, I thank you. We thank you, Lord, Father God, for this night, Lord, Father God, that you have given us a night to fellowship with one another, a night to hear from you, a night to hear a rhema word from you, Lord, Father God, to encourage um, one another, to be able to push us to be all that you have called us to be, Lord, Father God. I pray for each and every woman on this line, Lord, Father God, I pray that they are, that something that is said tonight pricks their heart, Lord, Father God, and helps them to evaluate what it is that you have said and are saying, Lord, Father God, in this very hour, Lord. I pray, Lord, Father God, for everyone who's still on their way, Lord. I pray um, for safe travel mercy to back from home or on their way home, Lord, Father God. And I just ask, Lord, Father God, again, once again, that you bless be you bless if somebody else is, is speaking tonight, Lord, Father God, whoever may be speaking, whether it be B or anyone else, Lord, I pray, Lord, Father God, that the anointing just fall, Lord, Father God, I pray that you throw your weight around tonight, Lord, Father God, that your glory fills this Zoom, Lord, Father God, in the name of Jesus, and fills each and every room that everyone is in, Lord, Father God, I just ask, Lord, humbly ask, Lord, Father God, that we all come with hearts ready to receive, Lord, Father God, open our hearts, our minds, Lord Father God, Lord Father God, to help us have a right spirit, Lord Father God, help us to be convicted if, if needed be, Lord Father God, but convicted in love, Lord Father God, help us to, Lord Father God, to have eyes to see and ears to hear, Lord, on tonight, Lord. So we thank you, we honor you, we glorify your name, and thank you once again for what you're about to do tonight. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, 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 amen. You better pray. You better pray as the spirit of the Lord leads. Amen. All right. Awesome. So we are going to get started again. Good night to everyone that uh, made it on here tonight. This is going to be, this is going to be a special push talks because of a few reasons, right? One, because it's the day before our fast. So, you know, God is about to instruct us and give us give us some stuff that's going to prepare us for what he's about to do for the next three days. For those of you who do not know, um, suited we do a fast for the first three days of every month. And so, if you are here and you've never participated in our fast before, you have an opportunity to participate in this one. We also hold prayer for the first three days of the fast, well, the fast is three days. So we have prayer 6 a.m. for the three days um, that you can come on and join and get your day started before we actually partake in what God is going to do. And so um, I'm excited about that. You guys know that every time we fast, God shifts some things around and causes us to experience the fire of the Holy Ghost and set us in place concerning what he is doing in our lives. So I'm excited about, we we never know what's about to take place. We never know what he's going to do. We never know. All we know is the theme that he gave to us and we pray and move in that direction. And then he just blows our mind. So I hope you guys are ready to receive what that is going to look like. Um, let's jump right in. Yes, Jasmine, ready for real, for real. Ready, ready, ready. And we're moving into to the spring months and God just does something very special um, in these months. He does something special all the time, but there's something about spring. And it's funny that I'm even saying that because today we're talking about reading your seasons. Come on, Sharita. New season, new season, new season. Y'all better go ahead and preach the message. New seasons, reading the season, reading the season. We are ready to read the seasons. And the word that God gave me today um, about our seasons is going to set us into place concerning our perception all right. A lot of the times we miss what God is doing because of our lack of perception, perception. Um, this is why the verse in Isaiah 43 says the Lord is doing a new thing. Can you perceive it? Right. Can you perceive it? Do you have the eyes to perceive it? Do you have the ears to perceive it? Right. Can you grasp what is happening? Can you catch it? Um, it's happening anyway, but if you don't have the eyes and the ears to catch what is happening, you can miss what God is doing. And so we're going to be delving into reading the seasons because I believe that God just wants us to wants to show us some things regarding the season that we may be in. All right. Um, and I'm going to release a lot of verses today. I didn't have like a set verse, but there were so many verses that God was given to me um, for tonight. 
And so if you are taking notes, um, I suggest that you take these verses down because this is going to help you regarding your perception, regarding your perception. All right. So if you see me looking down, I'm looking at my notes, um, but I'm excited. I'm excited. If you're excited, type in the chat. I'm excited. Come on. Ready to receive. I'm excited. Ready to receive. Come on. God is doing a new thing, a new thing, a new thing. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. All right. So, sorry, I have like 50 million notes. It's all right. We're not going to get through all of these today. You know, the, t- the teacher is rising. Sometimes I got to put her in a cage a little bit. Jasmine knows what I'm talking about because she a teacher and I'll be putting, I tell Jasmine, hold on, hold on. Cause you know, we, we go, we run and we don't stop. <laughs> so um, the word that God gave me this week, the word he gave me this week was recognize your season, recognize your season, recognize your season. I want you to speak to your spirit man right now and say, recognize your season. It's time for you to recognize your season. It's time for me, Bianca, to recognize my season. It's time for you, Jasmine. It's time for you, Jubilee. It's time for you, Todd. It's time for you, Athena, to recognize your season. Come on, Tana, Ashley, Kathleen. It's time for us to recognize our season, all right? It is time. And what God started to bring me into is, a very interesting way to look at the seasons, right? I had to look up the word season. You guys know that as a teacher with a teacher's anointing, I always want to know definitions of words because the way that I break down the word of God, I have to have context that makes sense, right? And for my mind, the all of the thouest and the shallowest and the all of that sound good, but I needed to sound right to a Brooklyn girl, okay? And so I looked up the word seasons and the Lord said, well, the dick, let's talk about what the dictionary said first. The dictionary said each of the four divisions of the year, spring, summer, autumn, and winter, marked by particular weather patterns and daylight hours resulting from the earth's changing position with regard to the sun. So I'm going to break that down for us. So it said each of the four divisions, there's four divisions concerning our seasons. We learned this in school, right? As children, spring, winter, summer, and fall. And it's marked by particular weather patterns, particular weather patterns and daylight hours. So immediately what the Lord said to me is that in order for you to sense the season that you're in, you have to know how to perceive patterns and know the hour. Okay, you have to know how to perceive patterns and know the hour. When you learn how to perceive the pattern, you can recognize the season that you are in. We know that in the natural, when there's a pattern of what cold weather, there's a pattern and a pattern is consistent. A pattern is something that presents itself over and over and over again. So when there is a pattern of some sort, it gives you an indication of the season. Right. And so we want to make sure that we understand that there are weather patterns and daylight hours that help you understand the signs and markings of a new season. And this is resulting from the Earth's changing position. So we know we learned in in what class was that? That was science. Right. We learned that the Earth is moving continuously. The sun is here. Right. It, It orbits the sun. Right. And as the Earth is moving The sun is in position, and as it's moving, every part of the earth gets touched by the sun at a different point of time, right? So we know that there's a result and there's a regard. It says that the result is from the earth changing its position with regard to the sun. I want you to catch this. This is not a science lesson, but I'm going to show y'all how God is about to set it up for us concerning perception, all right? So we know that the earth is moving, and we know that the sun is positioned So that as the earth moves, every part of the earth gets touched by the sun at some point of time. Understanding the signs and indications of the season is important so that we do not misuse or misalign ourselves when it is winter, thinking that it's supposed to be summer. All right. I want y'all to catch this. 
I want you to capture this because the perception that we step into seasons in is going to indicate what we receive. All right. Your perception is going to help indicate what you receive, because if your perception is off, your expectation is placed in the wrong place. Right. And we know that 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 expectation is one of the components that allows us to access and allows us to receive where your hope is, where your expectation is, usually is the place of your reception. And so if your perception is off, if how you see this season is off, you can miss what God is doing because your, your, your perception is not aligned. All right. I hope you guys are following me. So I have the ability to miss a God bred season by perceiving it incorrectly. There are some seasons that happen in our lives that we think is an inconvenience. And God said, no, this season was supposed to happen. This season had to happen. This season was not only supposed to happen, but I ordained this thing, right? We forget about the sovereignty of God in certain seasons that we are in because we deal with our feelings and he's dealing with systems. Let me tell you something. God said, I placed the sun and the moon to do its job and I placed it in a system that it literally respects the system no matter how you feel, no matter how I feel. The sun comes up at a certain time and then it goes down and it gives the moon some shine, right? Because I put a system in place that cannot be revoked. And I'm telling you, the Bible says that he knew you before you were even in your mother's womb, meaning that there was a system that was already set in place. There was a system that was already set in place concerning the seasons and the shifts. But because you go off of your feelings, you think that you were inconvenienced. And the Lord said, no, I'm not inconveniencing you. I put a system in place that has to respect my word because I set it in order and it cannot disrespect what I said. There's a system that your line patterns after, all right? And so it's important how we perceive seasons. Important how we perceive seasons. Come on. So your view can cause you to grasp or your view can cause you to miss. A lot of us will walk, us, walk outside and we see the rain falling so hard and we think that it's an inconvenience to our life, not understanding that it's ordained for the good of our production. It's ordained for the good of our abundance, right? It's ordained to wet the grounds. It's ordained for something to grow. It's ordained for something to sprout out from the ground. But yet, because we're in our feelings, we think it's an inconvenience. And the Lord said to me, this is how we treat the seasons of our lives. You see a little rainfall, you enter into a season of challenge, you enter into a season where your faith is being shaken a little bit, and all of a sudden you're like, this is an inconvenience for me, and the Lord said, you don't even know what you're dismissing, because your view and your grasp will cause you either to grasp what I'm doing in this season, or reject it. I need us to learn how to read our seasons. Can you capture what I'm establishing, or have you misread the season? Can you capture what I am establishing or have you misread the season? Let me give us some foundational understandings and perception of seasons. In Genesis 8:22 it says, "While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease." Forget what your feelings tell you. Forget what your feelings tell you. Forget it. Why? Because when the earth remains, as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. So the seasons that I have placed and ordained over your life before you were even in your mother's womb have to continue. It has to happen. There's nothing you can do about it. But what you can do is your response. How we read and how we respond is going to be the game changer in the seasons that we're about to walk into. All right. It has to happen. It has to happen. It has to happen. As the earth remains, seasons, shifts shall not cease. It responds to a system. He said, I set it in place. It responds to a system. And this is an abundant system, a system that is a result in regard to. The system of seasons and shifts in your life is a response to what God put in place to further you. But you reject it because of your feelings. We misread it because of our feelings, because we feel entitled to have summer all the time. We feel entitled for things to be rainbows all the time, right? 
The scripture is Genesis 8, 22. Hadassah and um, Sharita, if you catch it, can you put the verses as I say them? Genesis 8, 22. So your life is a response to what God put in place to further you. Psalm 104, 19. And this is going to be a perspective shift to anyone in here who is ready to grasp that mentality that's going to get you through this year. I'm telling you, a lot of us fainted in 2022, not because the storms were too strong, because we didn't know how to read the seasons. We didn't know how to perceive based on our heavenly perspective. So we were in our flesh, we were in our feelings, we were in our emotions, and what was happening to better us and bring us into an abundant place, we rejected because of our eyesight. And the Lord is going to fix that for us tonight, as long as we receive it. Psalm 104, 19 says, he made the moon to mark the seasons. The sun knows it's time for setting. He made the moon to mark the seasons. The sun knows it's time for setting. He made and the sun knows. He made and then what he made knows. I want you to understand this. This is how foundational this, this perspective is. You got to know that what he made concerning your life, the season that he made concerning your life, it knows when to come into place. You think that this stuff just happens? You think that, that the God of sovereignty, this stuff just happens by chance? No, he knows because he made it. The sun knows, the moon knows, everything is in response. It's a system, it's a system. He reminded me that everything that happens in your life, it responds to a system, a system of progression, a system of abundance. It responds to a system. That's how sovereign I am. What I established for your good was made and it knows. You think that I would know that you were in your mother's womb. I had a plan for you. And then I'm not going to know the seasons that I've marked for your life. He made and he knows. This is a perspective shift. Again, because some of us enter into hard seasons and we reject the fact that God is sovereign. He said, I'm restoring my sovereignty in your heart so that when you enter into these places, you understand that it's just a shift. Winter has to come. Fall has to come. Summer has to come. Spring has to come, right? Daniel 2.21, it says he changes times and seasons. He removes kings and sets up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. God said to me, I govern the shifts in your life. I govern them. I move according to my authority. I set the systems in place to serve you. But listen to this. When you go to a restaurant, how do you get served? When you're seated. When you're seated. The Lord said in the past season, what you guys have been doing is stepping into what I consider my restaurant and stand there in anxiety without being seated at the table. How you get served is when you're seated. Only one who sits boldly at the table benefits from the service. My God, when he said that to me, I was like, so you mean to tell me there were times that I was in the room, I just didn't sit down? There were times I was in the room and I just did not sit at the table. But this season, we're not missing that. We are not missing that. You're walking in boldly and you're sitting at the table. Come on, come on. He said, you've been standing in anxiety in rooms where I put tables for you to sit. Let me tell you, there's a story in the Bible that I love so much. This was the story of loaves and fish. When the people gathered around to hear Jesus speak, right? And this is the powerful part about what he said. Yes, the powerful part was that he multiplied the food, he fed everybody, cool. But let me tell you what he did. When the disciples, let me let this siren pass because sorry, God, I live in Canarsie. So you know, it's always lit over here. Come on. We pray for the person that's about to be in the ambulance in Jesus' name. But we, he, he called all the people. The people were coming to hear what he had to say right? And let me tell you what he said. He said, I command the people to sit down. 
Jesus had no idea how these people were going to be fed. Right. He didn't have this master plan. Ain't nobody was calling Uber Eats. There was no caterer. Right. There was nothing planned and in place for the people to eat. But he said, I command the people to sit down. Do you understand how powerful that is? That there was a faith that said, I need these people to sit down, that the posture of being seated means that I'm ready to receive. Because he knew something was about to happen. And that's the expectation that we have to walk into every room with. That I didn't come in here to stand at the door with anxiety. I didn't come in here to be accessing a room and I'm so anxious that I don't sit down. The Lord said, you, not only will I put you in the rooms, but I'm going to cause you to sit down. There's a, there's a posture that is required for us to receive. But if you don't know that you belong in the room, you're going to stand by the door in anxiety. He said, sit down, sit down, sit down. Somebody type that in the chat, sit down, sit down. To be seated is a readiness to be served, a readiness to eat, a readiness to partake. But anxiety has caused us to stand. Come on. It's like somebody who misreads the signs and the patterns of the season and wears shorts in a storm. Where are you going? Where are you going? Read the season. And, and what's, what's crazy to me is that when we misread the seasons, we can misread the directive. So you think that God is telling you to go left because you misread what this season was ushering in and now your directives are off. Now, now your feet feel twisted all because you didn't read what this season was ushering in. Just because it's raining doesn't mean you don't go to work. You just dress accordingly and prepare. But some of y'all see winter and you get frail and you say, oh, I'm putting down my tool to build. I'm putting down my sword to fight. It's winter, it's cold. I saw, I was laughing on Facebook yesterday because I saw how much, how much, right? The, yes, Nicole, that's exactly what I'm about to say. I see all, especially y'all teachers, y'all teachers in here, Y'all was praying for a snow day to shut the schools down. I seen them all on Facebook. Please, God, let this be a snow day to shut the schools down, right? We, we, get, we, we get put in winter and we get frail. God said you get thrown in a challenging season and you start to faint. You start to get weary where you want to give up. Now, it's one thing to be weary, but it's another thing to throw in the towel because of your, your frailty. The Lord said, Sis, you've been frail in your winter. Just because it's snowing outside don't mean we get the day off of work. We just prepare accordingly. We put them snow boots on. Let me tell you something. And when I used to work outside in sales, I had my good old moon boots on because nothing was touching my feet. I felt like I was walking on sunshine and clouds because I had to get prepared for the snow. I had to get prepared for the winter. Hadassah knows she used to be on the block with me right? I had to get prepared for the snow. I could not run because it got challenging. I could not run because it got uncomfortable. Some of us in here, we get too frail when it comes to the winter seasons. We get scared. I'm telling y'all, some of y'all from Brooklyn, but the Brooklyn runs out of you when the winter come. You get frail. You start shaking in your boots. You start shaking in your boots. One storm hits you and all of a sudden you want to give up. The Lord said, you've misread this season, sis. You've misread this season. If you understand, this is why I push so much be the CEO, because I understand that seasons have to serve me. Seasons have to serve me. They are on assignment. The Bible says everything works together for the good of those who love the Lord, me, who are called according to his purpose, me. If, if your identity is all jacked up, you won't know that seasons have to serve you. You won't know that challenges have to serve you. You won't know that shifts have to serve you. So you stand at the door and you wait, wait to be seated. Oh my God, I don't know. It's your table, sit down. Your seasons have to serve you. But when we misread the seasons, we think that winter is against us. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Winter is not against you. That thing came to serve you. Challenges are not against you. That thing came to serve you. 
I declare that the Issachar anointing, that anointing that causes us to read the seasons well, will fall on us. I declare that as we move into the rest of 2023, that we will have the ability to see the patterns and the signs concerning the seasons. Come on, Holy Ghost is teaching us tonight. He's teaching us tonight because too many of us have fainted when we should have sat at the table. Winter is here to serve you. Now, you may not like what winter is serving, and that's a whole nother story, but winter is here to serve you. I want to talk real quick about the seasons because what God had me do was look into the, the a children's teaching regarding seasons, and that thing blessed me so much. And these are some indicators that I want you to pay attention to. So we're going to start with spring. There were five indicators for spring. The first one was that buds on the trees or bushes start poking up spring bulbs. And he said, that's new beginnings, new beginnings. So in the spring, you'll start noticing there's a lot of new beginnings. You're sensing new beginnings. You're sensing a, a, a rising of new things, right? New things. Also, the snow starts melting. So that hard season starts to dissipate. You start experiencing almost like I can see clearer now, right? The rain is gone. The snow is gone. Things start clearing up. It also said that birds begin building their nest. So there's a fresh wind to create. That's another indication of springtime. Also, the robins are looking for worms to eat. He said there's a hunger for increase. So this is another indication of springtime. Another indication is that frog eggs are in the pond water. And he said it's birthing season. And so these are some indications of springtime. You'll see that in your life, you'll start to see these shifts taking place. You'll start to see it. You'll start to feel it. You'll start to sense that. That we have summer where the warmer weather starts to be ushered in. So there's a little bit more ease and light that you're sensing. Then there's green grass, a luscious harvest, lots of flowers blooming. Lots of birds. He said new songs. You start feeling a new song bursting up in your heart. Fruits and vegetables in gardens. And that's the enjoyment of the harvest. Rainbows during rain showers, a reminder of his promises. So you'll begin to see those indicators in summertime. All right. These are just physical indicators that God has now put a prophetic word on. So I need you to sense this. I need you to read into this. I need you to understand the season that you're in and know that they're all working for you. Fall, the leaves start to change color. So usually you'll sense a lot of transition. The leaves fall from the trees. There are, there's a, a bit of disconnection and definition, right? Cooler weather, a lot of indicators, again, of transition. Acorns and pine cones fall to the ground. This represents release. So you'll start sensing release in your heart. It's time to let go. It's time to disconnect. It's time to release, right? Squirrels gathering seeds and nuts. This is preparation and strategy. And then some birds migrate south. The Lord said that I will show you distinguished removals, that the things that don't remain when it gets hard begin to fly away, begin to disconnect. And then lastly, our favorite, winter. Winter. Shimon says squirrels. Yeah, squirrels gathering seeds and nuts. That's preparation and, and strategy. Perfect. Winter, cold weather, right? Cold weather representing discomfort. Snow days, hard matters that you may be experiencing. Icicles, stubborn situations. Some animals hibernating. This is where the teacher called long suffering appears. Outdoor plants wilt and turn brown. This is you perceiving past your feelings and training of your spiritual eyes begin. And then shorter days, the greater examination of time. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll post these in the chat as well so that you guys can have them. You need me to run it back? I'll, I'll, I'll post it, I'll send it to you. I'll send it to you, sis, I got you. 
So if we have challenges reading the seasons and understanding the patterns and the hours, you'll be expecting sunshine in the winter and you'll miss out what the Lord is ushering to you. Yeah, I'm a Sunday. I'm a Sunday. I got y'all. I know it was a lot of information to take in, but I'm a Sunday. I told y'all I'm going to teach tonight, right? I'm going to teach tonight. So lots of, lots of information. I will definitely send it over to you guys. If you have trouble uh, reading the seasons, what God is ushering in through your winter, your fall, your spring, your summer, you will misread based on your feelings. You will lean on your feelings to receive. And if I tell you, your feelings cannot capture what is happening in the spirit realm. You will miss it. You will completely miss it. The basis is that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. So you'll be expecting one thing to happen because I feel like I should be here. I feel like this is what should be happening in my life. I feel like I should have this by now, right? For many of us in here, we're all women. So we get plagued sometimes with the, I feel like I should be married already. I feel like I should have a family already. I feel like this should have been the season where this happened. I feel like this thing should have turned around. And we miss what God is ushering we miss what he is ushering through the season. Now, don't get me wrong. There's some seasons in your life that stay longer than others because you haven't caught what was being ushered, right? And that happens. That happens. I'm not going to lie to you. That happens. Winter, just winter is a little bit longer because we haven't captured, right, what God was doing in that season. So the more you misread and the more you don't catch what you were supposed to receive, right, I know, I know, sis, it be wintering, right? It does what it does. But if you don't catch what you were supposed to receive, how do you graduate? It makes me think about, think about in high school, you got to keep taking that same test over and over. Annoying um, regents. Oh God, I need them to throw away regents. Annoying. When we were taking regents, we were scared out our behinds. Why? Because you failed the regions, you were not going to graduate. It just wasn't happening. And some of us have been in the test for a very long time because we keep failing. And when I say failing, I mean, you're not capturing what God is doing in that season. So you got to keep repeating and repeating and repeating until you get it until you catch it, until you capture what I'm releasing, until you understand, understand that the rain is for you, until you understand that snowfall is necessary, until you understand that that wind might have pushed you a little hard this season, but it was for you. That thing was for you until you capture it. But it's all perception. How do you catch what God is doing? You catch it through perception. This is why Isaiah 43 tells us, do you perceive it? It's happening, but have you captured what this thing really is? Have you captured why I allowed you to experience that? I'm telling you, a lot of us who are going to sit at tables and eat from the table, the way that God desires us to eat from the table are those who understand how to perceive and capture the seasons. You got to capture it. You got to capture it. Come on. Come on. The fact that there are clauses to everything working out for the good. The Bible says to those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Wouldn't that be everyone? Why would they put clauses there? Wouldn't that be everyone? Why are there disclaimers? Those who love the Lord, those who are called according to his purpose, because it's for the kingdom. It's for the kingdom. It's for you. It's for you. You are a part of the kingdom. It is for the kingdom. And there are movements and shifts in your life, but it works together. And until we catch that, until we catch that, I know it sounds remedial, but I promise you, the Lord wanted us to hear this tonight because there are some things that are about to shift in our lives and we can miss it if we misread what the season is assigned to usher in for us. We can misread it. 
and missed the entire season. The sun goes down so the moon can do his part. Issues arise, challenges arise, storms come in, and then they shift. Then you have harvest time, and then that shifts. And then you have falling away. You have disconnection time. Then that shifts. Seasons, seasons. Some of us need to go into prayer and ask God, what season am I in? Am I misreading this thing? Have I not captured what you're releasing in my life right now? What season is this? What am I missing? What do I need to catch? What do I need to grasp, right? Did I miss something? Did I miss something? Is this prolonged because I missed something? Or are you just trying to allow me to experience this thing so I understand that it's ushered for me, that whatever is birthing in me, whatever is chiseling away. I tell you guys all the time about the season that I just came out of. When I tell you, it's probably one of the hardest seasons I've ever experienced in my life. And then to hear my friends, the prophetic people around me tell me, you just got to let the seed be planted. You got to sit through this thing. You just got to let the waves hit you, the wind blow you. You got, you just got to let it sit. You got to let it sit. You got to sit through this thing. You have to sit through this thing. It was, it was probably one of the most annoying, but empowering instruction because I couldn't really understand it. But let me tell you what the word of God says. It says in James 5, 7, be patient, therefore, brothers, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth. See how he waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient about it until it receives the early and the late rains. The farmer even understands that I can't wait for a har harvest or be in expectation of a harvest until the early and the late rains hit the ground. Do you understand what that looks like? That if I understand that these rains are for me, if I understand that this thing was to build me, this thing was to bring me into my expected, and I cannot push that away. I cannot push that away. I cannot reject that. They patiently wait for the rain. They patiently wait. That sounds like an oxymoron to me. You mean to tell me I have to patiently wait for something that I deem an inconvenience? I have to patiently wait for challenges. I have to patiently wait to be sharpened. But without being a farmer, you're going to think it's an inconvenience. Do you know your identity? That God has called you to literally farm the grounds of your life? They eagerly wait for rain. That thing blew my mind. That thing blew my mind. The very thing that we feel is an inconvenience to our life and to our day, the farmer eagerly waits for. You understand how identity is connected to this? The farmer, if I'm in my flesh, it's an inconvenience. But if I align and identify myself as a farmer, farmers are those who look for harvest. It says, consider the farmers who patiently wait for the rain in the fall and in the spring. They eagerly look, yo, they eagerly look for the valuable harvest to ripen. You know how I know that some of us in here are not aligned as a farmer who's waiting for a harvest? Because you complain when the rain falls. You complain when the rain falls. The first thing out of your mouth is, woe is me, why me? Why me? And not God, I eagerly wait for the harvest. I eagerly wait for the harvest because I know that all things are working together for my good. I know that all things are working together for the good of those who love the Lord. And that's me. So if I line up with that identity, I know I'm a part of that fold. I know that whatever this rainfall is looking like, yeah, I might not like it. It might not feel good all the time, but I eagerly wait for the harvest. I eagerly look for the rains. I'm telling you, this thing was a visual for me that as a farmer, they literally eagerly look for the rain. To be honest, some of them pray for the rain. 
But you know why you don't pray for rain? Because you don't even have anything in the ground. You don't got nothing in the ground. You don't sow. You have nothing in the ground. You don't have goals. Your goals ain't big. It's like, whatever. You just live life as a leaf in the wind. But a farmer who is in expectation knows I just drop seeds in the ground. There ain't no way this rain can't fall. I need the rain to fall. I need the rain to fall. I am eagerly looking for it. Lord, this, it, 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 might, it might feel like this thing is against me. But if I understand that I'm waiting for a harvest, I understand my eager expectation is that I cannot remain the same person that I've been in 2022. I can't remain the same person that I was in last season. So your reign is going to have to perfect me. Your reign is going to have to cleanse me. Your reign is going to have to usher in a harvest that's about to shift my life. But I'm not going to be an expectation if I don't have the identity of a farmer. If I stay in my flesh, I'm going to look at every challenge as an inconvenience and not as the food for my growth not as the food for my growth the farmer said wait it's still not raining let me tell you California is known as a place where they don't see a lot of rain but you know what they do see a lot of fires a lot of fires and let me tell you what the Lord told me about this I was talking to my sis Ebony today and we were talking about the, the, the message. And I said to myself, she was like, she, she brought up California. She said, think about California, no rain. You know, they, they, they get eager for rain. The land is dry. And so there is fire. There is fires all the time. We see on the news, forest fires, all of the trees burning down, houses burning down. He said, Without the identification of a farmer with expectation of the rain, a lot of us have been experiencing some very dry seasons. Dry enough to cause a damaging fire. Dry enough to cause a damaging fire. And you're over here thinking like, what's happening around me? What is going on? What is going on? Because I didn't identify as a farmer. Farmers. They are eager for the reign of the Lord. I'm not telling you that it's going to be easy. I'm not telling you that, oh, this is a walk in a park. Oh, yeah, you go through troubles, you go through challenges, and you're just supposed to smile and laugh and dance to it. No, that will be unrealistic, right? Sometimes our flesh does get in the way. But if you identify as a farmer, there's an eager expectation for the rain. There's an eager expectation for the rain but we got to recognize the season. We got to recognize the season. Stop complaining and start perceiving correctly. So you know what to do and how you move. If I see a certain weather come up, come on cat, come on cat, you caught it. You caught it, right? I'm not going to shout and, and, and go, go crazy today. I'm teaching because the Lord wants to pull some stuff out he wants to pull some stuff out. I'm telling you, your perception is going to be a game changer for you in this hour. It's perception. Some things are not going to change right away, but you know what has to change? How you view it. How you look at what this season is looking like. How you look at what this season is bringing you. That some of us, he said to me, some of us have been even dressing incorrectly because of our misreading of the seasons. So you've been putting on anguish and, and, and been putting on sorrow and been putting on sadness because you thought the winter was your enemy. But if I take the posture as somebody who's about to get served, I'm seated at the table. I'm about to get served. So I'm dressed for it, but I'm ready to eat. If somebody told you that there was a whole room filled with every great food that you could think of, fruits, vegetables, you think because it's raining outside and it's snowing outside that you're going to miss your opportunity to step into the room? No. Winter don't mean stay home. Winter don't mean faint. Winter doesn't mean that this is the end. It means I'm going to dress for it, but I'm going to still show up. God, I'm dressed for this. I'm dressed for this. It might mean that I got to bundle up a little bit more. Y'all know we live, most of us live in New York right? 
We bundle up. We bundle up. Come on, come on. I got to dress correctly for the season that I'm in. It's a misreading when I look like old season because then I'm operating in fear. I'm operating in anxiety. Imagine, imagine dress for the season that you are in. But in order for you to do that correctly, you got to know, you got to know, Lord, show me the season. Show me what season I'm in right now. Expose me to the season that I'm in right now so that I'm walking correctly. I'm talking correctly. Sometimes even in prayer, the season that you're in will teach you how to pray. So you think, oh, this is time for war. And you, ha, da, ba, 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 he, da, da, da. and God is like, sis, I just want to be intimate with you right now. Like, I want to be intimate with you right now. I just, I just want to sit with you. I want you to be still, right? I want you to be still. Can you imagine a soldier pulling out a, a, a sword in the middle of a simple conversation? I just want you to be still right now. It's not even the time for all that. But I wouldn't know if I misread the seasons. A lot of us make decisions based on our feelings and our emotions and not the season that we are in. But I believe what the Lord is ushering us into is an exposure to the season that we are in. Come on, Ty. An exposure to the seasons that we are in. That every season ushers in something for you. Every season ushers in something for you. It might be summer for you right now. It might be spring for you right now. It might be winter for you. It might be fall for you. But every season has an assignment to serve you. Every season has an assignment to serve you. And I promise you, it sounds so simple, but this thing is going to break some stuff off of our lives. Every season has an assignment to serve you. And if you understand that, the complaining will cease. The worry will cease. The anxiety will cease because every season has the assignment to serve me. Every one of them, every one of them, it has an assignment. You understand what an assignment is? You understand when something has an assignment from the Lord? It was sent with a heavy purpose to serve you but we got to sit down. We got to sit down. Have you ever went to a restaurant and stood at the door and got served? If you have, tell me where they are because I'll be hungry waiting. <laughs> I'll be hungry waiting. So if you know the restaurant that does that, tell me because I'll be hungry. But you got to be seated. You got to be seated. And the Lord said, I need you to sit. 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 What I serve, it may not feel good. It may not always be sweet. Come on, come on, Drew. The purpose of the process is to perfect us and usher us into every promise. Come on, I need you to sit. I need you to eat. I need you to eat. It's some, some, of, some of this season stuff is a hard pill to swallow, but I need you to eat. I need you to eat. I need you to eat. Come on. I'm talking to somebody, spirit man right now. I need you to eat. I need you to pull that seat out from that table, sit down and eat and eat. Come on. Some of you in here who have children, you know what this thing looks like. That medicine don't taste too good. It don't, but I need you to eat it. I need you to sit down and eat it. Because it's good for you. It's good for you. Come on. Jesus. Come on, Siobhan. Wow. Wow. Come on, Roz. I'm so used to serving. I don't even know how to eat anymore. Jesus. Jesus. That's a word. That is a word. My God. And that's the posture right there. That's the posture. Some of us are so used to serving that we don't even know how to eat anymore. He said, it's your turn now. 
It's your turn now. Come on. Go ahead, Drew. I found a mute button quickly, bless the Lord. Um, just wanted to add to what you were saying because it's got me thinking about this table. You ripping me to shreds right here. Um, and I hear the Lord saying like, we've, we have to know how to create um, the food we seek to eat. Mm -hmm. So it's like in spaces where we feel like, sometimes we feel like it's a drought or there's nothing there. And it could be that we're in that kind of season and we don't see the fruit. But the Lord wants to remind us that really the fruit of our lips creates the, the fruit that we need to sustain us for the season. Mm -hmm. But it requires us to really plow. It requires us to till the ground with the word of God. It requires us to literally use our faith to create what it is that we are expecting God to do. And in doing so, we become it. Our situation begins to look like what God said it's supposed to look like. Oh, I don't have enough you know, money for this. Well, let me say that the Lord shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Come on, come on. I hang Right after I get off the phone with the bill collector that called me this morning, and she said, when are you going to pay the bill? I said, uh, March 18th. <laughs> Jesus. Because the Lord shall supply. And so this in these seasons, I feel like it's, especially when it's lean, it's really critical for us to realize that we have all sufficiency mm -hmm. in all things. Mom. We are in abundance and we are lacking nothing. If you got a mouth, and you got a spirit that can feel the presence of God and a sound mind, you can literally speak yourself into your next. Come on, come on. So if you are sitting at a table and you feel like there's not enough ketchup, there's not enough French fries, there's not enough vegetables, you literally can put so order. spiritually put in an yeah. order come on. and command those things to show up. So for as long as you got faith and those words, you can literally create what it is that you need to see. So we are never really a drought jesus jesus come on holy ghost come on holy ghost cat i saw your hand up i don't know if you wanted to say something but if you did you could go ahead come on yeah i wanted to piggyback on what she was saying because before you even mentioned farmers um i was posting on social media about the lesson that you're teaching on and our farmers came up in mind automatically mm -hmm. and i was thinking about how even the farmer is cognizant about timing of seasons mm -hmm. and they know that in different seasons there's different things they have to do to prepare themselves for what's about to happen yes <clears throat> and when she was talking about the fruit of your lips what the farmers normally do during the winter time they're actually planting mm -hmm. they don't plant anything and that's i thought good. about um in that season that we're in that feels like winter that's the time they need to plant what are you doing in your space to get yourself ready for the next, right? And then I was like digging into it. I was like, and I was like, Dad, what is this? What does the season look like for, for um, spring for the farmer, right? And the springtime is the time where they plant their seed, right? What does the season look like for summertime? That's when the crops start to come up. Mm -hmm. So I, what God was saying to us is that for me, when listening to this, I, I honestly knew that God was dealing with character. Yeah. He was giving, he's dealing with our our space and how we feel about the season and how it feels um, out of place for us. And I also thought about the time when Jesus saw the tree from a distance, it was bearing no fruit. Mm, come on. Right. Please. And the fruit from a distance, it looked like he still called it a fig tree. Right. Mm -hmm. And he saw that it was not bearing fruit. And then I thought about like, even in that season, the, the tree naturally does not bear fruit. It won't grow, but God still yeah. cursed it. And what I, I felt in my spirit, God was like, in in season, in out of in and out of season, we still should be bearing something. Yeah, that's it. That's it. It wouldn't matter what season it is. He still has expectations of you in and out of season. There's an expectation that God wants us to do things, and He doesn't really care about how you feel because what's in you, He wants it to come out. Jesus, come on. So when He's saying that, He's like, what what He's really saying to all of us is that His word would not return back void. Yeah. And that's the seed. The seed is his word. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The seed Jesus. that he's talking about at this at, at this moment is not just a, a tangible seed of you giving your money to church or you know, mm -hmm. giving your time. He's saying my word would not return back void. Come on, come on, come on. 
So every time you speak, you're speaking his word. Jesus. Mm. Mm. My God, my God, my God. His seed is his word. Come on, come on. It's his word, it's his word, it's his word. And, and what's so amazing about that as both Jubilee and um, Katiana were talking, the Lord brought back to my memory that same verse that we were talking about in Isaiah 43, where it says, I will do a new thing, right? A lot of times when we hear that, we just start dancing. It's like, yes, he's about to do a new thing, a new thing. But that new thing can be winter. That new thing can be winter. It's just a shift. He said new. He didn't say what you consider good. He didn't say what you consider great. He didn't say what you consider sunshine. He said, I'm doing a new thing, right? What is new for you? It might mean that you're about to enter into a new season, but if you do not know how to read what is happening, I'm telling you, we will miss it thinking differently than what God is ushering in. Come on, come on. Yes, Sharita, children of Israel, come on, come on. A new thing, a new thing, a new thing. It's sometimes unpredictable, uncomfortable, unfamiliar. Come on, right? But again, we have to view this thing the way that God views it. I'm telling you, don't miss it. Don't miss what this next season is about to usher in for you. Do not miss it because of your emotions. Do not miss it because of your feelings. Do not miss it because you're in your flesh. Step into how God views this thing. Step into how he views this thing. Yes, Kat, in the winter, the farmer is planting. In the spring, the farmer is planting. In the summer, the farmer is growing his or her crops, right? And in the fall, the farmer is harvesting. Know the season and know what needs to be done. Go ahead, Drew. Oh, Lord, you got me fired up. I, I just went back to your analogy about um, sitting at the table. And the Lord really wants us to be reminded of the fact that it is his will, his way. When we go into a restaurant, right, depending on what kind of restaurant, like what the vibe is, it's a lounge, they got certain seating. If it's a five star, a certain kind of seating, right? And God is saying like, when you come to sit at my table, right? You sitting down and is acknowledging your acceptance of my way of doing things here, Jesus. my protocol. So it is an acknowledgement of the season and the function of the protocol to say, Lord, it's your will, your way above mine. It's the surrender because we can access and understand the season and not accept the protocol. Wow. 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 You wow. ever, okay. Case in point, you ever seen somebody, it's like what they say about New York weather. When you be, you see somebody on the street and they got on a bubble coat, Tim's flip flops, shorts, and a bathing suit. And you're like, what season are we doing? Right. Right. right? But then you have the people that's like, I don't care if it's 78 degrees outside today. I mean, I ain't finna wear a bubble coat, but I am going to throw on this, this blazer, this sweater, because I understand what season it is. And I'm not going to be distracted by this little cute summer day. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So let us be reminded, let us accept God's way of doing his will in our lives. Let us understand that his thoughts are above our thoughts. Yes. His ways are above our ways. And if we come to sit at his table, we surrender. We surrender to his way of doing things. That is a part of aligning with the season. Come on, come on, come on. It's like, it's like sitting and waiting for the chef's special. You don't, you, don't, you don't necessarily know what the chef's special is, but you know that it is good. It is good. It's good. And I think the foundation... Not I think, I know that the foundation of us understanding seasons, we may not understand the breakdown on how everything is going to flow, right? We may not understand the breakdown on how the wind is going to blow, how hot the sun is going to be. Because to be honest with you, some of y'all in here love summer, but I don't like summer. I like winter, right? I don't like hot sun. I don't like that thing beaming on me. For me, I read that like, this is very uncomfortable for me, right? So, but it it's, Whatever is required for me to do to make sure that I'm accepting what the Lord is ushering in. I'm accepting what the Lord is serving. I'm accepting what he's ushering into my life. I just got to know that it's good. That's the foundation of your understanding that it is good. It is good, 
right? It is good. Let me read uh, in the chat. Kelly said, don't be discouraged by a difficult harvest. We have to gird ourselves up, put our back into it and reap. In the natural sowing, it's easier than harvest, but we can't sow and then faint at harvest season. Come on, come on, that's it, that's it, right? Jubilee said, and they only serve that one special. They're not changing it, no substitutes, come on, right? Chantel said, we go to a Caribbean restaurant not looking for Chinese. Knowing how to read it, knowing how to read it. Go ahead, Danny. Hi guys, so I came in a little late, but um, as you guys are speaking, I just saw a visual of the table and I don't, for those of you who know me, I'm a visual person and I love movies. So for those of you who ever saw Peter Pan and the Lost Boys, right? With Peter Pan and the Lost Boys, the Lost Boys used to get real excited when it was time to eat. And if you know about the Lost Boys, they had a real, they would think, you would think of them as a real vivid imagination, with a real vivid imagination. But every time they sat at the table, there was a feast because they knew who they were. They were able to see the feast laid in front of them. But Peter Pan in this space, he had grown up and he could no longer see and believe the way that they believed. So even when he stood there at the table, he wasn't able to see the feast because he didn't understand that he was Peter Pan. He didn't know who he was. He had forgot who he was because of life and what it did to him. He forgot who he was. So the lost boys, the children were able to sit at the table and see the feet spread in front of them. So for me, I was asking God, like, why am I seeing this? I really didn't even know really what the message was about today. But even as Jubilee um, spoke about sitting at the table and the protocol, we can sit at the table and be willing. But if we don't understand who we are, we can miss some things at the table. Jesus. So they all go hand in hand. Know who you are when you're sitting at the table so you miss nothing. So you can see everything spread in front of you. So it goes back to identity. So that's it. Yo, don't miss it. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Don't stand at the door. Sit at the table. You know when there's certain people that come into a restaurant and you know they got position, you know they got status because the kitchen is like preparing something. Like we got to prepare something real special and good because so-and-so is here. I need us to understand that God is preparing something major, right? Major, 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 major. But you can miss it if you walk in there with your feelings. If you walk into next season with your emotions, you can miss it. You can miss it. And we are not missing any more seasons and what we're supposed to receive from it, what we're supposed to get from it. We're not missing it. We're not missing it. And I believe that the Lord wanted to give us this reminder tonight so that we understand that everything that I serve you, says the Lord, is good. But if you look at it through your feelings, if you look at it through your emotions, you will miss it again. You will miss it again. Go ahead, Drew. All right, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to make this my last one. Pride. We really got to get the pride under subjection of the Holy Ghost. If we sit at the table, we know the season, and which we're, we're surrendering, but we're afraid to ask, or afraid to enter into a season that is new, where we don't know the landscape, we don't know the people, we don't know the places. It's all unfamiliar. Pride has the power and potential to take over and cause us to shut our mouths where we should be curious, where we should be asking questions, where we should be like, yo, B, I've never done, uh, what was the thing you was at SOP before? Can you help me, right? Or seeing somebody else in the group that does a similar business and it's like, well, now nah, I don't want to ask or, well, are they going to be able to help me or... This is the season when you're surrendering, right? And learning what right? God is in your ear and he is literally providing live coaching, right? Like a basketball coach does or a football coach does on the field. Literally, he's in your ear at the table telling you what to order. Come on. Telling you what you have access to. So please do not allow pride to cause you to miss resources, not shoot your shot, not ask for assistance. It's a new place. And therefore, learning must be the highest on your list. Surrender mm -hmm. is above it, and learning is right after that. Don't let the enemy steal the newness of the season and the learning from the season because he's got you sitting in pride, fear, shame, and all those other things. It's time to kick it out. Amen. In Jesus' name.
in Jesus name, in Jesus name. On that note, we are going to pray. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. Come on. Those who had an ear tonight heard the word of the Lord. Those who had an ear tonight heard the word of the Lord, because there's some things that the Lord is about to usher in concerning the seasons of our lives and your perception can either grasp it or reject it. It can grasp it or reject it. Come on, Ruth. No more tiptoeing around your promise. That's it. That's it. Walk in the room, sit at the table and eat, 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 eat. All right. Thank you, Lord. 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 How many of you have been having challenges reading the season that you've been in? You've been having challenges reading the season that you've been in. Siobhan, I see you. Jasmine, I see you. Tamika, Sharita, Ruth, Amber, Chantel, I see your hand. Kathleen, Rosalind, Taisha. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Naisha, I see you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Candace, okay, I don't know where I am. I hear you, sis. <clears throat> Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 Kelly, I see you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Of course you are, Candace. You sure are. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Father, we thank you. Amen. Lord, we thank you tonight. We thank you tonight. We thank you tonight for what you're doing. We thank you, oh God, because you are sovereign. We thank you, oh God. You are the I am that I am. You are all that we need. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We lift up our voices tonight. We lift up our voices tonight. We acknowledge your presence. We acknowledge, oh God, who you are. We acknowledge, oh God, that you are the I am that I am. We acknowledge, oh God, that you are everything to us, that we have nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing lacking, oh God. We acknowledge you tonight. We acknowledge you in our midst tonight. We acknowledge, oh God, that you are great, that you are mighty, that you are strong. Father, we acknowledge you. We come to you as daughters tonight, oh God. We come to you as daughters. We know, Lord, that you are our dad. You are our father. Lord God, you don't withhold any good thing from us. You don't withhold, oh God, any good thing, Lord. Even tonight, as you released over us, that you are doing a new thing and that new thing is good. No matter what our feelings and our emotions see it as, Lord, that you've given us the ability to perceive it through heavenly view, perceive it through the kingdom view, to perceive it the way that you see it, oh God. We thank you, Father God, for what you are establishing in the earth realm concerning our lives. We thank you, oh God, that we have the ability to submit to your leading. We have the ability, oh God, to submit to what you are establishing, oh God, for our lives, that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose, to your purpose, oh God. We know that it's all working together. We know that it is all coming together. Lord God, that if we only have the eyes to see, the eyes and the ears, oh God, to perceive what you are doing in this season, we know that it is working together. Give us the boldness, oh God, to step into the room and to stand and sit, Father to sit at the table and to eat of your goodness, to eat of what you are serving, Father, that you have already called the seasons into play to serve us, oh God. Help us to know, oh God, that you are serving us. You are serving us. You are serving us exactly what we need. We have all that we need pertaining to life and godliness, that we are not missing a thing. Lord God, begin to fill our bellies with the things that we need to get to the next level. Begin to fill our bellies with the things Things that we need to establish, oh God, in the season that you've called us into, Father. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that as we sit at the table, that we will not reject the food that doesn't taste good to us. We will not reject the food just because it may feel a little uncomfortable or maybe the unfamiliar. But Lord God, the plate that you put in front of us, I declare that we will eat and that we will receive the very thing that is needed for us to be processed into our 
our next season, that we will not go in premature or immature, that we will not go in without the fortifying that we need to stand, that we will not misread what you are doing in each and every season. Father, when summer comes around, I pray, oh God, that you will teach us to dress accordingly, that you will teach us, oh God, how to, to, to take up our harvest, to how to notice that the buds are coming through, how to notice when the when the, when there are fruits, oh God, that we are to collect. Teach us how to collect. Teach us, oh God, how to collect in the summer. Teach us, oh God, how to eat, Father God. Eat of the harvest. My God, teach us how to eat. Even as Siobhan stated earlier, oh God, that some of us have been serving for so long that we don't know how to sit down and eat. Lord God, pierce that word through our hearts and spirit mans that those of us who've been serving for such a long time that we forgot the posture of one that needs to receive. I declare in the mighty name of Jesus that you would teach us again how to sit at the table, that you would teach us again how to receive without resistance. I declare in the name of the Lord that we will learn how to receive. The Lord said that he is breaking down every bit of resistance. Some of us have forgot how to receive. Some of us pride is in the way that we don't know how to receive. He said, I'm breaking the back of that spirit that has come against your advancement because you don't know how to receive. I'm breaking the back of that very Everything tonight that you will learn how to sit at the table. You will understand who you are in this season. You will understand how directly connected your identity is to your reception. I declare that as we identify with who you called us to be, that our reception will get a little clearer that our reception will begin to clear up. My God, the antennas that you have placed on us, they will be upright. They will be ready to receive the channel that is going to help us with our view in this season. I declare in the name of Jesus that you will fix our eyes, oh God. Fix our eyes to receive the picture that is necessary for us to push forward. Fix our eyes, oh God, that we would not miss the assignment that was set to accomplish the things in our life. Fix our eyes, oh God. And even when winter comes around, holy God, I declare in the name of Jesus that our perception will not fail us, that our perception will not cause us to faint, that our perception will not cause us to become weary and give up, that our perception will not cause us, oh God, to walk out on the assignment because things got a little hard and things got a little challenging. I declare that we will be dressed for the season. I declare that we will be prepared for the season, that that Lord God, that even when the snow falls, it will cause us to not call out, but we will get dressed accordingly. Father, teach us how to dress in the challenging moments. Teach us how to dress, oh God, for the winter. Teach us, oh God, even how to prepare for what's coming. Teach us, oh God, how to see what the season is ushering for us. Give us the eyes to perceive it well. I declare over all of my sisters, including myself, that we will perceive winter well. We will perceive winter well. That all seasons have been set up and ordained to release something in and out of our lives and we will perceive it well in Jesus name. Even as we experience autumn, oh God, I declare, oh God, that the disconnection that some of us may be feeling, that the disconnection of the things that are falling off of us, the disconnection of the things that don't belong, that we will not misread those seasons, oh God, that we will allow the disconnection to happen. We will allow, oh God, that falling off to happen. We would allow, oh God, that thing where you are removing some things that is uncomfortable, that it feels like it's barren, but it's just giving room. I declare over our lives that we will not misread autumn again, that when we see a tree that doesn't have a leaf on it, that we don't see barrenness, but we see room. Hallelujah. My God, we don't see barrenness, 
but we see room. Lord God, make room, make room, make room for the new to sprout up because we know that autumn is not forever, that the falling off is not forever, that the falling off and the disconnection is not forever. But the Lord said that I am making room for the new bloom. Jesus, I am making room for the new bloom in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And Lord God, I thank you for springtime, oh God. I thank you, Lord God, that you are teaching us how to respond to the harvest. You're teaching us, oh God, that when the harvest comes, that we would know how to collect. That we would know how to collect, my God. That we would know how to collect. The Lord said that I am fixing how you view your identity in this season because I'm going to teach you how to collect. I'm going to teach you how to collect that same thing that he's been speaking over us all night concerning standing at the door of the restaurant and not taking a seat to be served. The Lord said, no more will you misread the rooms that I'm about to bring you in just because you feel like you don't belong, just because you feel like you don't want to make too much noise, just because you feel like you don't want to be noticed. But the Lord said, I'm bringing you into the room to sit down and be served to sit down and be served. I pray that the expectation on your life will rise, that the faith on your heart will rise. It will rise, it will rise. I speak to every heart on the Zoom and I declare that your expectation will rise. It will rise in Jesus' name. It will rise in Jesus' name, that we will be like farmers in your word that says that they eagerly expect the rain because they eagerly expect the harvest. I declare, Lord God, that the faith will rise and that our identity will come into alignment with farmers. Our identity will come into alignment with farmers, not with our flesh, but alignment with people who understand if I put something in the ground, that the rain has to hit the floors. Hallelujah, my God. The Lord is showing me even a vision right now that heavy rain hitting the grounds, there is saturation that is necessary for you to bud forward. I declare that you will never again miss see what the Lord is doing concerning your life when rain hits the ground, that it will saturate every dry place. It will saturate every dry place in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I'm literally hearing the patterns of the rain saturating the grounds. It's necessary. It's necessary. It's necessary. My God, teach us how to be farmers, Lord. Teach us how to be farmers. Teach us how to be farmers that we will look in expectancy in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord is going to begin to open up some of our eyes in here. He's going to begin to open up some of our eyes in here. There are some of you in here that have been eagerly expecting a harvest, but because you didn't know how to read the season that you were in, you rejected some things that the Lord ushered in to, to, to pull some stuff out of you, to pull some stuff out of you. When God gave me the theme for our suited walk this year, he said, I want you to walk out to walk in. And many of us in here are eager to walk into new rooms, new seasons, new levels. But we don't want to walk out. We don't want to let go. We reject the stuff that just don't taste too good to us. But he said, I'm teaching you again how to read the season so you won't miss what I'm serving. You won't miss what I'm serving. You won't miss what I'm serving. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Tanisha, I don't know um, if you're here. If you are, if you can unmute. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy God. Thank you, Holy God. Thank you, Holy God. Did anybody invite Tanisha? Thank you, Holy God. Hello, I'm here. Hi, how are you, love? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for asking. 
So as I was praying, um, the Lord showed me a vision of you walking really, really fast, like really, really, really fast. And it's almost like you were walking and you weren't hearing anything. It's like, I don't know where you were going in the vision, but you were walking really, really fast. And the Lord began to say that whatever you're in a rush for, whatever you are walking fast towards, it's like there was a destination and no, it's almost like nobody could stop you. You're just walking really, really fast, but it was out of anxiety. And I wanted to pray for you because he said that whatever you've been asking him for, it's already done. And he's going to teach you how to operate out of rest and not out of hustle and anxiety. I don't know. I don't know if this is that you have been eagerly asking the Lord for or eagerly waiting for or eagerly moving towards, but in the vision, you were walking really, really fast. I don't know if this resonates with you, Tanisha. It does. It's actually confirmation. Okay. So I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you. Um, Thank I'm gonna you. Pray for you. Do you feel comfortable sharing or is it something that? Um, I don't even know where to start. Um, so right now, I like normally I I'm in I am in a place where I'm tooling a lot. I'm a fashion designer, so right now it's like prime season. So I feel like I haven't been I just haven't been in a place to really hear God. I feel like I just been in a season of tooling. And I feel like I'm in this tooling because of what I'm trying to get. I'm trying, I'm, you know, I'm determined to get a place for me and my kids, a place of our own. And <clears throat> he keeps reminding me that I don't have to tool for it. Um, but I feel like when I'm not in a space with God, like where I'm really hearing him, like my mind goes somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So then I'm right back tooling again. But it's like, God, like, you know, I got all these deadlines. Like, what am I supposed to do? Like, so I'm just really trying to get in a place where, like, like this week, I just been in a place of really fasting, but I, I don't even feel like I've been fasting effectively. You know what I mean? Like, so yeah, it's just been a lot of tooling, basically. Got it, got it. Got it. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense, because literally in the vision, like people were talking on the side of you, you weren't hearing a thing. It was like straight tunnel walking really really fast um thank you for sharing it thank you for being vulnerable what I want to remind you of is that you operate from the finished work right and I want you to picture in your head a race a racetrack right and we know that in the world they start from the beginning and they run to get back to the end but in the kingdom we start from the end because we're starting from what's already finished we're starting for what's already done. And so what toiling says to us is that we have to achieve the blessings of God. We have to achieve what God is doing for us. We have to achieve it. I got to put in the work to get it, right? But he's like, no, it's already there. And I'm going to teach you how to just get it through access. It's identity. It's all about knowing I'm a daughter. My father doesn't ignore me. My father doesn't hold anything good for me. My father doesn't say, oh, you got... You, you want this, you got to work hard to get it. You got to, you got to make sure you break your back to get this thing. You got to earn this thing from you. No, that's my dad, right? That's my dad. We always go back to the, the, the visual of going into your parents' house. I don't ask my mom to go into her fridge, right? I just go in and I open the fridge. And sometimes I even walk out with groceries. <laughs> Those of you who know, when you visit your parents' house, you leave with a whole bag of stuff, right? <laughs> We don't ask because mm -hmm. it's almost like you understand your rights as a daughter. And I just want to pray for you concerning that because all it is is identity, right? I don't want you to beat yourself up mm -hmm. concerning, you know, you, you, you mentioning that you've been toiling because God sees your heart and he knows that you're going after this thing, but it's a level of high level of anxiety while you're doing it. So I'm going to pray for you. And I believe that the Lord is going to blow your mind and show you exactly who he, who he is as your father as your father, not just as a provider and somebody mm -hmm. who gives you things, but as a father, it's almost like an obligation. Like I'm not a deadbeat. I'm not about to leave you out here like that, knowing that you are in need. I'm a dad. 
Okay. And so I want you, I want you to walk away with that understanding, but we're going to pray. And I want you guys on here to pray for Tanisha. We're going to bombard heaven for her because I believe that what God is about to do in your life is going to blow your mind. And he's going to bring you into an understanding that I don't have to break my back for this thing. His, 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 his bones, well, his bones wasn't broken, but his, his flesh was broken already so that you don't have to break your back. You get that? Yeah. Amen. There were nails in his hand already. So you don't have to pound nails. It's, it's an exchange. He already did all that. He already did the, 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 the toiling and, and the bleeding and the, so that you don't have to do it, Tanisha. Okay. So we're going to pray. Father, we thank you for Tanisha. We thank you, oh God, for our sister. We thank you, Lord God, that she is about to step into a season where she understands who she is as your daughter, Lord God, as your daughter, as your daughter, as your daughter. Father, even now, the breakdowns, even in her own earthly father, oh God, I declare, Lord God, that you would show her who her father is. Show her who her father is. Show her, oh God, who her father is. My God, my God, show her who her father is. Jesus. Tanisha, I'm sorry. Before I continue praying, I want to ask you what God just showed me is how do I say it? So he showed me a, a man holding a baby, right? And rocking a baby. Do you feel like you grew up missing like coddling? For my father, you mean, or just well, general? just overall, overall. Um, yeah, but it never really bothered me. You said it never bothered you. It it never really bothered me. Um, it, it did at one point, but no, it it's it's not something that stuck with me. Okay, okay. The only reason why I'm asking is because there was a like there was a disconnect with that. And, and almost like it was something that was necessary. Like, you know how, when they say, when babies come out, you kind of have to do a lot of skin to skin, mm -hmm. like for connection purposes, I'll, I'll pray more into that, but I, I want to know exactly why God show, showed me that. And I can talk to you after about that, but I pray that mm -hmm. even if there are any voids, father, that you will fill any voids, every crevice, every corner that you will fill it now, oh God. Help her to understand, Father, who she is as your daughter, as your beloved daughter, as your daughter that has access to everything that you have, that literally sits with your inheritance, that possesses your possessions, oh God. I declare that every thought and every lie that may come up in her mind about who she is, Father, I pray, oh God, that we cast down every single thought that tries to exalt itself above your knowledge, above your truth of who you say that she is. I declare over her life that there will be a reminder of her daughter, oh God. It will be a reminder of her, her, her sonship. It will be a reminder, oh God, that she doesn't have to toil for what you've already provided for her, that she just has to believe her way into it, that she just has to receive her way into it, oh God. Show her your identity. Show her yourself so she can see herself, oh God. I thank you for the mirror that you're putting up to her soul, oh God, that she will begin to see you. She'll begin to see you. She'll begin to see you. I just keep hearing the phrase over and over. You know, when, when people look at children and they say, you look just like your father, the Lord wants to remind you that you look just like him. You look just like him. There's no difference. You look just like him. And as you step more into that realization, you'll understand that every single possession that he has, it belongs to you. It belongs to you in Jesus name. And we can't wait to hear the testimony, Tanisha. I'm believing God for you concerning your place. I'm believing God for you concerning what he's about to usher you into. Know that he has the ability to blow your mind. And I declare that faith will rise in your heart and that it will not come from a place of work. But it will come from a place of belief. It will come from a place of belief. Just believe that he's going to do this out there. Just believe he's going to do it. Amen. Do you believe that he can do it? I do. I yeah. know he's going to do it. Yeah. 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 His word is bond. His word is bond. He don't go back on his word. I'm telling you, he, he, once he said, I have for Tanisha what I have for her as he releases it, that's it. 
or its responsibility is just to be established. That's it. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. And I need you to hold him to his word. He is going to do it in Jesus name. In Jesus name. Amen. So much Thank you. And I'm going to follow up with you because I believe that this is going to happen for you. And I want to make sure the resources, even in believing your identity, even in believing your identity. Amen. Thank you. You're welcome, love. Thank you. Um, Jasmine, make sure that I get Tanisha's information, okay? Okay. Do you have something to say? Yes. Uh, hi, Tanisha. I just heard the Lord say um, he wants to rewire, um, rewire your thinking through saturation such as your playlist, the music that you're listening to, whatever you're taking in. I just picked up like re a real deep root of discouragement and God wants to cancel that in the mighty name of Jesus. I know the Bible says that hope deferred makes the heart sick, but I decree and declare that your heart is well in the mighty name of Jesus. And that when you rise up in the morning, you'll be filled with expectation and the root of bitterness will be removed from you in the mighty name of Jesus. He wants you to again, have childlike faith like think of a child frolicking through, you know, through the, uh, the, the forest, all green around, right? He leads you besides the, the, the still waters and green pastures, right? And he wants to restore your soul. Mm -hmm. So saturation, saturation is going to break the discouragement that you felt, the toiling that you felt. So create a playlist or maybe be, we can connect and figure out a playlist or what have you. So she has something to listen to and saturate 24 seven and it will literally cancel the things that have been attacking you in your mind. Come on, love it, love it. And Danny is going to send you one of her books and I'm gonna send Amen. you my- Thank you. Welcome. Um, Danny will send you one of her books and I'll send you my um, affirmation book as well so that you can start that saturation. Um, cause God is good okay. God is to give you the, the mindset to receive all that is already happening for you. All right. Okay. I just want to say something. Um, go coach. She invited me tonight <clears throat> and, um, God is so amazing. I, my phone was on do not disturb. So like whenever it's on do not disturb, like I can't, you know, no one can get through, like you don't have nothing on your screen. So it's funny, I asked my son to hand me my phone and I wasn't even worried about my phone, but I don't know, I guess that was the Holy Spirit telling me, pick up your phone. So he hands me my phone, I see Goko um, name and she invited me and I'm like, wow, how did she bust through my line and it's on do not disturb. Yeah. So yeah, I just had to share that. So I know that God wanted me on here. <laughs> yes, he sure did. Yeah. And it's, fun, it's funny you say that because going back to the vision, you when I say you were walking and couldn't hear anything, so the fact that God got through your do not disturb, he needed you on here for real. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. I love how it works, right? Yes. yes. And, and that's him being a good dad, a good dad, waking us up, right? Yes. He's alarm clock. Thank you again for being here. Yes. Um, Thank you. That is so good. I am excited. I also see somebody else who, um, Nicole Prime, were you invited by someone? Hi, good evening. Yes, or good night. Yes, Nadia invited me. Nadia. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. And Nicole, um, what do you do? Do you have a business? Um, no, I just, I work at a school. Okay. What, what do you do at a school? Um, assistant principal of operations. Oh, come on, yeah. assistant principal of operations. I feel like was she yeah, at the launch? Yeah, I met you guys at Danny's. At oh, Danny's launch, yes, because yeah. I remember the position. <laughs> yeah, oh Lord, that part. And yeah. <laughs> I remember the position. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being here. Um for having even, me in the word. Bless the Lord. Of course, of course. Um, even as I was just talking to you, I just saw like hair growth very 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 long very long right hair growth and um there's something that's about to hit your life regarding advancement at a very fast rate very very fast rate and sometimes what happens with when of course we're all black women in here right so we know that when there's new growth that new growth is a little tough right sometimes it's a little a little grimy depending on if we got like grease and stuff in it 
you know, when we wear braids, we see that like little, the, the, the accumulation of, of cells and dirt and all of that. And so sometimes new growth can look a little bit messy, but what God just showed me was a very quick, it was quick. Like it came out real, real quick. And so I want to encourage you that as you've received the word of the Lord tonight concerning the perception of seasons, that sometimes the faster the delivery, right? When you think about something like Amazon or FedEx or UPS, the delivery is fast and the price is a little bit higher, right? You pay a little bit more, right? And so I want to encourage you that even as the Lord has shown me that there's about to be a season of great advancement that's about to hit your life, that the price might be a little bit more, but it's going to be worth it because the growth is quick. And so there's some things that others may take a longer time to experience and they have to learn at a slower pace, but because of how you grasp, right? The Lord said, as a child, you were even a very fast learner that you grasp things very quickly. And that's the same way that he's going to be operating with you in your adult life, that as you've grasped things quickly and you've learned how to be a steward, even of correction, I'm hearing, um, he said that he's pleased with how you've stewarded correction, that I'm giving you a fast growth track that might cost a little bit more, but you're about to get some stuff that may happen in a few months that took some people years. And so I'm excited for you, but I also want you to fix your eyes on Jesus, who's the author and the finisher of your faith. Do not remove your eyes off of him. Do not, do not let anything disrupt or interrupt your gaze because it's going to be necessary for how fast this thing is going to be ushered in, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Bless the Lord. And amen. forgive my camera for being on. My pastor will off. My pastor will come for me. That's okay. <laughs> no worries, no worries. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. All right, awesome. Um, if anybody has anything that they need prayer for, I want you to definitely um, drop it in the chat or you can DM me separately and we're definitely going to be praying for you tomorrow, 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 tomorrow is our fast, starts our fast. I'm excited for what God is going to do for us in the month of March and um, our fast is for three days. And so if you are able, um, six o'clock in the morning, each day we will be praying to start our fast off. Um, Sharita, I don't know if you're able to be on, I don't know if you're on a plane already or in the airport, um, but if you wanna just give details really quickly about the fast. Yeah, hi everybody. So like Beyonce, Bianca, <laughs> why am I saying Beyonce? Lord forgive me. Bianca, <laughs> Bianca, let me put some respect on her name. Bianca Kane, the CEO. Um, like she said, tomorrow starts our March fast and we're really excited. Um, it's from the first to the third and the theme for our fast is understanding your dominion and influence, which really aligns with what we talked about today with knowing our identity, knowing what season we're in. If we know what season we're in, then we understand the dominion and the influence that we have. And so um, we're going to start off tomorrow with prayer at 6 a.m. Come ready to pray, ready to storm um, the throne of heaven, the gates of heaven, and um, make sure you wake up a little bit before six, you know, get up out of your bed, wash your face, brush your teeth, come ready to pray, you know, don't, don't come praying in your bed because be going, we going full force in the morning. So yeah, we're really excited. Um, if you've never fasted before, um, please connect with me. I'd love to share some resources with you. We also put together a fasting guide. I don't know if it's ready yet. Um, but yes, hopefully it'll, it'll be ready by tomorrow. <laughs> okay, it's going to be ready by tomorrow. But we put together a fasting guide for all of you all. Um, and it's also a reflection workbook too, so that you can keep track of, you know, um, the things that the Lord shares with you throughout the fast, because it's so important to keep note of everything so that you can go back to it and continue to pray on it and continue to believe God that, you know, what he said to you during the fast, he's going to do. So we're really excited about that. We're going to release that tomorrow. Um, if you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to reach out to me, but yeah, we're looking forward to it. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you so much. And the fasting guide that Sharita put together is absolutely amazing, guys. I can't wait for you guys to get this. Um, it is 
So uh, you're abstaining from food, right? So we usually do, go ahead, Sharita. Sorry, I missed those points. Sorry, Siobhan. Yeah, so we're abstaining from food. We're only drinking water and unsweetened tea between the hours of 6 a.m. and 3 p.m. So whatever your time zone is, if you're Eastern time zone, Central, whatever, 6 a.m. Uh, to 3 p.m. Eastern time. We're abstaining from all food. We're only drinking water and um, unsweetened tea. Obviously, if you have a medical condition where you need to eat, um, you know, feel free to modify it, but um, just, you know, do it as the Lord leads you. Amen, amen, amen. Awesome, awesome. And um, before we go, just some quick, quick announcements. All right, and then we are getting out of your way. So first and foremost, um, we definitely want to sow into tonight's word. I actually want to be a blessing. Um, I'm going to follow the Holy Spirit. I want to be a blessing tonight to um, Tanisha. I want to be a blessing. So let's sow into her tonight. Um, I just want to read our statement really quickly. Sowing allows me to put something in the ground holding my space of harvest. As God is releasing the harvest for this word, my seed is recognized. If I don't have financial seeds, I sow my faith into the word and believe that God would do what he says. I receive the anointing on this word. And as I give, I give in faith and not out of obligation. I receive the anointing on this word. And as I give, I give in joy and not in sadness. I receive the anointing on this word. And as I give, I give in celebration and not in doubt. And remember to sow from your heart. The amount does not count. We're going to be blessing Tanisha tonight. Um, I'm going to follow what I sense in my spirit. Uh, we're going to bless her tonight. So let's be a blessing to the sister as we are sowing into even the word of the Lord over her life, that she's going to receive a home for her and her child or children. Um, we are going to partner with her by sowing a seed. All right. Again, it does not matter the amount so from your heart and believe that God is going to do what he said he's going to do. You're going to send it over to our cash app, Suda Circle, and we'll get that over to Tanisha, okay? Um, let's sow into her life today. Also, upcoming events, make sure you save these events. Put them in your calendar. On April 12th and April 13th, we're going to be having our Jump Summit. It is free, all right? So all of you should be registering. There's no cost to this event. Um, so that means that everybody should be registering. You can register on the site at www.womenunderoneroof.com. Um, make sure that you guys register and invite your friends and family, all right? It's for women. We're going to have multiple speakers who's going to be coming through to talk to us about jumping. The earth is waiting for us to manifest. So it's very important that we jump concerning what God is calling us to do. We're breaking the back of fear um, at this event. So make sure you're bringing everybody out that you can think about. All right. Also, our suited walk is going to be on Saturday, May 20th. Um, suits and sneakers. The theme is walk out to walk in. We're walking out of the old to walk into the new. So let's make sure we have that date on lock. Uh, we pull up and walk. The walk is going to be in Prospect Park again this year. So let's make sure that we are getting our suits and sneakers ready for our walk. Um, last but not least, our memberships are open. So if you're looking to build your business, if you're looking for resources, to build structure and systems that move you from just being an entrepreneur to being a big business owner. We have memberships that are available. Uh, they range from $20 to $99, fitting all desires of investment. If you are interested um, in more information, type be the CEO in the chat and we'll get that information over to you. Okay, you could also reach out to me personally um, or to the admin at the circle at gmail.com. All right. I love you guys so much. And I hope that- Me, Tanisha uh, wanted to say something. Oh, yes, yes, yes. You don't have to do that. Like, I don't, I don't even want to receive that. If anything, I seen somebody wrote in a chat that someone has cancer or something. So whatever is sown into me, I want to sow it to that person or I don't know. I don't know. She's, she's, um, I see she's in seventh grade. So maybe the parents, so they can pay for her medical bills or whatever the case may be. But I do really appreciate it. I truly do. So 
I just want to pass that blessing on. Whatever is sown to me, you give it to Nicole. Well, I don't, I don't know, I don't know the person's name, but whoever she's talking about. Got it. I'm not sure who that is. Um, but we're gonna sow into your life, Tanisha, because I'm gonna follow what the Holy Spirit is saying. Um, if you want to connect with Nicole, that's totally up to you. Once it hits your account, you could decide what you want to do with it. But um, I, the Holy Spirit told me to sow it into your life concerning your blessing, concerning what he's about to do. All right. Um, so you can you can contact Nicole if you'd like and find out her information and send it for um, for the the young lady. But this is for you. Mm, and Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Yeah, exactly. You see the sisters are saying receive. Holy Spirit, don't ever block what God is doing concerning uh, sowing a seed. This is this is for you to sit at the table and eat, all right? Um, we're going to sow into your ground because God is about to do something major, and so we're going to sow into that, all right? Um, Danny, do you want to say something? Yes. Uh, that, thank you for saying that, Um what came up for me was Siobhan said, you're so used to giving, it's hard to receive. When God says something is happening, open your hands and receive because you have no idea what he's doing. Get used to people pouring into you because that's what's coming. Don't reject what someone is, what God is, when God is sending someone to pour into you. So get used to receiving, not just now, but get used to it. Mm -hmm. So a part of slowing down is also you receiving. So I just wanted to share that. That really just hit me real strong. It was like, you're not used to receiving. And it's not, what comes up for me also, and because I understand it, we don't walk in places of false humility. It's not okay to just give somebody something away. You deserve it too. You deserve it too. What you give is what you deserve as well. So I just wanted to share that with you, Tanisha. Amen. Amen. That's it. That's it. Thank you so much. And you hit it right on the nose. Like, I... I'm not good at receiving. Um, I was always taught to give, you know, give to the poor. I teach my children the same thing. We give to the poor and that's what it is. But um, he has uh, said that through someone else before that I need to learn how to receive. Amen. So that's something that, um, yeah, I, yeah, I'm trying to work on it. Yeah. I get it. I understand completely. But this is how, this is how, even sometimes how we receive from people is how we receive from God. And the restrictions we put on receiving on earth is how we receive from heaven, right? Exactly, Naisha. We don't believe that we are worthy of receiving. And so God is going to switch even how you view that tonight. Um, that even what he's about to pour into your life, as you come into the knowing that you are worthy of receiving, that what he is pouring out, you won't reject that either. It's almost like telling God, like, no, just do it for somebody else that's in need. You're waiting on something, but do it for somebody else that's in need. You know, um, it's the identity thing. So I pray that the identity that you even receive tonight or you're stepping into that tonight, that you won't reject anything that God is about to pour into you in Jesus name, in Jesus name. All right, awesome. Um, so we're gonna end here. I see you guys sewing. Amazing. I'm going to send, um, Tanisha, if you can text Jasmine, your cash app and Jasmine, just send it over to me and, um, I'll, I'll give everybody until 10 30 so that I can send this over to her. Awesome. 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 All right. Perfect. So I'll see you guys tomorrow morning, 6 AM for prayer. And um, be blessed. Love y'all.